What's up guys, welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage. In this week's episode, things are looking up for our 07K swap Porsche 944. Stay tuned. If you saw last week's video, then you know we had a number of issues when we had the car on the dyno. Luckily, we believe we've figured pretty much all of them out. The most minor of the issues was an oil leak where the lower sump and the upper oil pan met. That ended up being a high spot on the aluminum uh, upper pan flange. I must have bumped it against something when I was installing the engine. So I filed that down, reinstalled everything, shouldn't have any more oil leak. The major issue, however, was when the car was on the dyno, uh, it all of a sudden spiked really high in temperature and then our 3d printed prototype rear coolant flange just decided to let go we originally attributed this to my thermo switch not working to turn my fans on but what had actually happened was the engine threw a belt so therefore the water pump stopped working and it just skyrocketed in temperature when it got that hot it went above uh, kind of the point where that carbon filled nylon could stay together and it just let go. Unfortunately, that flange is on the back of the engine and you can't really get to it without pulling the engine. So I've spent the last two days, I don't know, eight hours probably total, just jamming, getting the engine out, replacing that flange, taking the lower oil pump off, fixing that leak, resealing it, reinstalling the engine. I just got done putting oil in it. All the electrical connections are done. Uh, the last thing I have to do though is address the reasons why that belt got thrown. There are a few different theories as to why that belt got thrown. I posted the question to a couple of Facebook groups and I got a lot of responses so I really appreciate that. Uh, one of the things that came up a couple times in the picture that I posted it showed my tensioner pulley and this pulley if you notice has a groove right in the middle where the belt rides. I thought that was factory. I thought that that was just built into the tensioner pulley when in fact it's not. It's supposed to look like this. And people said there were a couple Volkswagen techs that said they actually saw cars in stock form throwing belts the minute the tensioner started looking like this. So first thing I did was to replace this. The other thing we noticed is that the power steering pump actually had a little bit of play this flange right here onto the shaft with both belts on there if you squeeze the belts it would actually start to deflect a little bit some people also said that welding this uh, pulley mounting flange to the shaft can help with that so we did that we tig welded the front here I don't know if that's helped at all but what the hell <laughs> we'll find out lastly we decided to modify the pulley itself. So here's the pulley as it came. We went ahead and added this additional material here. So basically we're just building up the edge of the pulley so that the belt can't walk off. None of those are the ultimate solution. We actually had a number of people that replied and said, the ultimate solution is to go to the TTRS crank pulley. And then Iabed makes a tensioner pulley that has a shoulder on it as well. And once you do those two pulley modifications, apparently you no longer have any issues. You can spin the engine to whatever RPM you want, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what we're gonna do. But unfortunately, I couldn't source those parts in a week's time. And we've got to get the car back on the dyno today, which you'll see later in the video. And then we're taking it to Putnam Park this weekend to do its first track torture test. The last issue we had the last time the car was on the dyno was running out of fuel. Uh, I had stated in the last video that we had to bump the pressure up to like 60 PSI uh, to get it to where the injector duty cycle wasn't just ridiculous. Well, thanks to some people that posted in the comments in last week's video, the factory 07K fuel pressure is actually 65 PSI. So there was nothing wrong. We just didn't have the fuel pressure set right originally. We had it set at like 45 PSI, which was my mistake. So when the car goes back on the dyno this evening, we're gonna bump it to 70 uh, get a little bit of extra pressure over stock just because of the modifications we've made and we're hoping for the best. So now all I have to do is bolt on this modified power steering pulley and then we can start the car, bleed the cooling system, and it's ready to go on the trailer and go to performance electronics. Moment of truth guys. Let's see if I know how to remove and reinstall an engine in eight hours. Ah! 
Looks like I at least halfway know what I'm doing. We worked all our issues out, and it's finally time to make some pulls. really cool okay time for another update we shredded another belt unfortunately so all of the uh, short-term fixes that I made earlier didn't work but what we did figure out is that the tensioner that was on the engine felt really notchy and the spring didn't feel as strong as it should be so I ran back to the shop real quick and I stole the tensioner off of Alan's engine and we just installed it and we're in the process of reinstalling the pulley and a new belt. The tensioner feels much, much better. So hopefully that solves the problem. If it doesn't, we're pretty well screwed and we're just going to have to miss the track this weekend and hope that they give us our hundreds of dollars back due to our mechanical malfunction. But anyway, that's where we're at. Gonna button it up, start it back up, fingers crossed. We did some uh, steady state tuning. We worked on the meat of the power band. Everything's looking good. So far the belt is staying on. So now we turn the big fan on and we start to do some power runs. Timing's, timing's still really low. So power is not gonna be that great right now. But you gotta start somewhere. It sounds so good. So that run we made 166 wheel horsepower and 140 foot-pounds of torque. Obviously, as we increase timing, that'll go up. All right, guys, so the belt held for quite a while. We did a number of power runs. Uh, however, this last one we did, it's, it's midnight <laughs> on Friday, and we're supposed to go to the track Sunday. But anyway, the last run we did as we let off the throttle at the end of the run, the belt jumped a little bit it didn't completely come off and disintegrate, but regardless, we just went ahead and shut it down and called it a night. Let me show you where we're at right now. So on that run, we made 172 horsepower and 140 foot-pounds of torque. And there is the curve. We had added a little bit of timing on that one, and as you can see, it was continuing to gain power. This was at 7,000 RPM, and it still hasn't dropped off yet, so we're not sure where the limit is as far as RPM. What we do know is that we need to work on the belt. We need to work on the front accessory drive and figure out a permanent solution so that we stop throwing belts. Uh, we obviously can't have this issue on track. It's the next day. We're not done by any means, but we decided to take the car out and do a quick rip, uh, mainly just to feel the transient throttle response. So I'm gonna give David the camera and let you guys listen in. I'm not sure that the dyno numbers at this point really relay how big of a difference there is in this car, but it's obscene. It is a entirely new car. I can't wait to get it on the track. The car is completely buttoned up. Uh, David from Performance Electronics just added one of their race dashes for me. So 
we're gonna be able to monitor all the vitals better. Uh, he also helped me set up some alarms. So if for some reason the belt comes off and coolant temp starts going up, uh, we'll have a big bright alarm on the race dash. Uh, also, one of the main reasons we wanna have the car on track is to test our oil pan design and make sure that we're not starving the engine of oil in higher G corners. So we set up an alarm for the oil pressure as well if it drops below, I think 30 PSI, maybe it's 20, but uh, regardless if it drops to a certain point, we'll get an alarm for that. That's the dash right there. Uh, I will show you guys more about that when we are at the track. That'll be in another video, but it's a pretty cool little design. We obviously had to make some concessions in order to get prepared enough to make it to the track. We still need to work on all of the belt issues. I believe I have a solution. I ordered the TTRS crank pulley this morning, which has a, an integral harmonic balancer. So I'm assuming that's where uh, that helps because we were seeing that the main belt problems were as we were quickly letting off the throttle at high RPMs. So that harmonic balancer should dampen some of those forces. Uh, Iabet is also sending us the tensioner pulley that has rails on it to help keep the belt centered. I've had multiple people reach out and tell me that after they did that, they weren't having any more issues. So those fixes are on their way, but they're not gonna be done for this weekend. In order to try to mitigate any potential belt issues, I had David drop the rev limiter down to 6,500 because it was living fine up to around seven. The minute we went above seven, it was just chucking belts. So to be safe, we dropped it down to 6,500. We wanna be able to go out on track and hopefully not have to worry about it. We also are not done with the tune. We ended at 172 wheel horsepower on a Mustang dyno. I mean, maybe that's getting close to the final numbers. I, I don't know. Dyno numbers are obviously a bit arbitrary. Um, as long as we're using the same dyno and always testing it, then we're in good shape. But um, we'll bring the car back to Performance Electronics. David will continue to work on the tune. He's gonna work on the variable valve timing a little bit to see if there's any gains available. Uh, we're also still low on timing, so there's some potential gains there too. But either way, the car's running great. Uh, when we just took it for a rip, it, it felt awesome. It is. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how to explain it. It's so much quicker than what it was before. I think that it's very comparable to a stock or even just slightly modified 944 turbo. Just with a more linear power band, it just builds and builds and builds and builds. So that's it. We're gonna get everything organized. We're gonna head to the track tomorrow and we're gonna hope for the best. Wish us luck. See you next.